to get the size of the hood up before the rain came down and how welcome is this hardly had any rain for two months that looks very impressionistic doesn't it look at that What is going on, Francis? I am, what did I always say now, super, I'm super organised and super excited <laughs> because today we're having a delivery from a lady that does plastic free um, refills. So I've had to sort out all my tubs and jars and stuff and she's coming to deliver right to the boat. She goes along the Chesterfield Canal. I think she does Chesterfield Market as well. But um, I contacted her through Facebook and obviously I've just gone through the store cupboard. I've ordered everything dried that I can and just had to find all the tubs. tubs so getting... so what, are you, what sort of stuff are we getting? Uh, washing up liquid, shampoo, um, apricots and cranberries because you're going to make some muesli mm, for us. Apparently so. Cashew nuts, nutritional yeast, walnuts, uh, pumpkin seeds, basmati rice. White vinegar and so on, so on. Loads of stuff I've ordered. So I've just got to leave my containers out. She will weigh them, refill them. Anything I haven't got containers for, she'll put in a bag. And she delivers once a week all along the Chesterfield Canal. So she's not on a boat, she's in a van. No, I think yeah. she, she's in a, ba in a van and she just does a couple of markets, I think. Um, and it's just providing this service for boaters as well. Absolutely wonderful i'm so excited doesn't take much to make me happy does it <laughs> but there we are anyway get on with that cake you're gonna make me then no because the next job is um jam some jam so i've dug out some spare jars and my jam funnel and um got a big pot of damsons well we stopped the boat and collected them from the off side of the canal didn't we Look at those, all free. <laughs> so yeah, that is today's job, but I'm just gonna go and rest. I've got a sore leg, so I've gotta go and put my leg up for an hour and then I shall make jam. You haven't been well with this leg, have you, since you fell in, it's no. not been good. It's a bit of a funny shape, it's really sore. When I'm on my upright for about half an hour, it swells up, so short burst. I'm trying really hard to rest it, but I am really fed up with it now because it's such a lovely walking countryside, but. Hey ho, more weaving, more spinning, more reading. It's not bad, is it? So Steph has been and gone with a ban of goodies and left me to find homes for everything now. 
in our storage containers. A lot of stuff I've already done. Um, the cranberries and apricots, we've eaten half of them. <laughs> so that was easy. The washing up liquid, we've got a pretty glass jar that we use just to store ours, use our liquid by the sink. Um, and the rest of it is back in storage. And I'm just in the process of putting the rest of the stuff into the jars. So apart from our reusable boxes that she's filled for us, there's no plastic involved at all. Really pleased. Well, we are at the end of the Chesterfield Canal. Not quite the end, there's another six miles and 30 locks to do, but that navigation section is closed due to lack of water. The reservoir is really low and they're repairing things right now. Also a car park wall has fallen into the canal up ahead, stopping us to get, get into the marina and the services we need to get to. So we're turning around at the next lock, we can't go any further and heading our way back to West Stockwith. Uh, we just chundled our way through, enjoyed it. We've been on here for three weeks now. Um, but uh, we'll film our way back to West Stockwith and show you what this canal's like. It's quite beautiful, really. We really enjoyed it. Just a shame that we can't do the last section, which uh, apparently is beautiful. But we're hoping we'll get the train from Retford to Worksop and then walk down the end. We'll show you what it looks like. There's also been a couple of trees falling while we've been on the canal. So uh, apart from Fran falling in as well, it's been quite eventful. But yeah, lovely, beautiful canal and uh, looking forward to seeing it from the reverse journey. Well, this is where we've got to turn around and there's plenty of water in the canal so hopefully uh, we won't be getting grounded. Are you confident Fran? No. It's not a very big winding hole either, it doesn't look very big. No. That's why I've let you do it. turning the boat round. Not my best shot, but we are facing the right direction now and we didn't get anything around the prop and I only needed a little bit of manpower on the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much stuff under there though, you just don't rev it too much, you'll get yourself into too much trouble with all the muck. We definitely didn't want to use the bow thrusters and it is a tight winding hole. There's no room for manoeuvre really, literally. Anyway. Yes, anyway, indeed, and there's a lovely old pumpy nose. What have you got now? <laughs> hops. They're everywhere. There's hops growing just everywhere. So I'm not making beer. Oh dear. 
I'm going to make a garland. A garland? For the front of the boat. Oh, nice. Yeah, I thought so. But um, they're very soporific hops. Soporific? Yeah, make you sleep. Oh. So you better pick me up soon because I might be dozing off. <laughs> if you're going to fall, fall that side of the canal, not this side for once. This time, yeah. <laughs> This is such a wonderful canal for wildlife. It's teeming with fish. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. I wonder if all the other canals are like this, but you just can't see them. But it is superb. The banks are left to grow wild-ish. There's kingfishers everywhere. I've never seen so many dragonflies. Have you, Francis? No. And what did we see yesterday? A swimming snake. A grass snake swimming along the canal. Yeah, and you've amazing. seen eels. I've never seen the eels yet. Yeah, I saw an eel the other and day. A big pike. Yeah, massive pike. So we're just doing a couple of miles today and one lock. And uh, mooring up again. Uh, we've got to get some water, so uh, primarily that's why we're moving. And we're going to a town called Retford to pick up some parcels. Beautiful stretch of canal, this Frank. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It really is. I know you've been saying all about the fish and everything, but it's just really lovely. And there are a few, quite a few places to stop as well. It's been peaceful, gorgeous. We've got Osberton Hall just over there, which has uh, been in the same family since the 18th century, apparently. Massive pile. You can't see it from the canal, but we walked around it the other day, didn't we? And it's got its own little village yeah. set up there, which I guess has always been for the staff and the workers. Really nice. Well, that's the sum total of what we had wrapped around the prop after turning in that rubbish-filled winding hole yesterday, Fran. And I think we got off lightly, don't you? We did. It was a slow journey back, but... Um, it looks like one of those bits of rubbish is a milk carton it's got string on it and i know people use them as fenders and just leave them attached to the bow and it's obviously got pulled off maybe in the lock just ready and ripe to go around somebody's prop we were the lucky winners <laughs> <laughs> Doing a bit of spinning, Fran. <laughs> it's my new perfect hobby. It's just really, really relaxing. Really satisfying. And um, I did think about buying an electric spinner. You can buy one that does it automatically, but everything about our life is slow, isn't it? So I can yeah. take this anywhere. I, couldn't, I wouldn't want to be sitting out here with an electric machine using up precious power when I can just sit and do this and it's amazing how quickly you get to spin. I've only just started this one. I'm not very good at it yet, but it doesn't matter. I'm just loving it. And this is the alpaca fleece that we got from the alpaca farm that we went to. But um, there you go. It's just a lovely, lovely hobby. Talking about slow, that <laughs> kettle's slow to be putting on, isn't it? You told me I had to spin until my fingers were bleeding. <laughs> Had a 
lovely surprise this morning. We thought it was an Amazon delivery man turning up at the boat. Not that we've got anything ordered from Amazon. But um, some viewers came with an Amazon box and this homegrown allotment veg that they've brought for us. They'd been and picked it, seen the boat the other day and they've been to their allotment and picked all this for us. It's Andy and Pam. And um, yeah, it'll keep us going for a couple of days. Proper homegrown fresh veg. Unbelievable. It's lovely, isn't it? That's yeah. really appreciate that. It and is you got really. a bit emotional when they handed it over. I didn't did, you? <laughs> because it's like they've grown it all and it's just it's just what we would have been doing in the past, growing all of this. And miss it so much to so to get something brought to you like this is just wonderful. Yeah. So that's dinner today, salad tomorrow, I don't know. And um also I've been busy because there's been so much foraging going on. I haven't made loads of stuff, but we've got four jars of jams and jams and dams. Jams and dams. <laughs> and, jam. and it's completely really well set. And just a couple of bottles of elderberry rob. Um we're still using the stuff from last year and every time we get a little bit of a sore throat or don't feel quite well, we just have a spoonful a day just to boost our vitamins. Um, I might make another bottle because I'm not sure that will last us a year. We've got some maintenance to do. <laughs> yeah, we've got some maintenance. I've brought some more. We have got some more clips, but I think with the hot and cold weather, look, <laughs> and I keep thinking it's spider webs coming down on me. <laughs> so yeah, a bit of maintenance. This is us, and this has been home for the last two days. We're just on the edge of Retford. And what a gorgeous mooring spot it's been. We've got two days here and there's been nobody about. The odd dog walker along the towpath. Absolutely gorgeous views. We've had a day of sunshine and rain. And next to the towpath is all this woodland that we have access to. There's paths going into the wood all along here. We have to move tomorrow because our two days are up. But before we leave, I will take you for a little walk around these woods and show you what it's like. But enjoying our last night here in the early September sunshine. Gorgeous. Come on. Sway. We always seem to be finding new things when we're on these walks and the latest that we found yesterday and I didn't know what it was I've had to look it up is this gorgeous tree with these fabulous leaves I'd never seen them before or never noticed them and then looked at the bark for a giveaway and it was no help at all though it's beautiful but looking it up it's actually an oak and it's called a pin oak, Quercus something or other, I can't remember. But it's not native to us, it's an American tree and it was brought over during the 18th century to go in parks and gardens. No sign of any acorns on it at all. But what a fabulous tree and something else learnt today. And we've had quite a lot of rain over the last few days and this is what has happened. But I have no idea what these are. I have looked them up just for my own interest. But unless we are absolutely sure, we don't eat the mushrooms. We don't pick them. We don't need to. But aren't they beautiful?
So today we've got the train from Retford where the boat is moored to Kiverton Park and within a couple of minutes of Kiverton, getting off the train at Kiverton Park we're on the canal and this is the eastern section of the, of the Chesterfield Canal. We've walked about a quarter of a mile to here which is the completely the end of the navigable bit um, to Norwood Tunnel. This eastern section was finished being restored in 2003. There are just nine miles from here to Chesterfield to be restored. There are parts in Chesterfield that have been restored completely, but there's just nine miles left. This tunnel is 2,887 yards long and collapsed in 1907. <laughs> and the canal was officially closed in 1961, but uh, has undergone restoration since the 70s. But uh, we're here because we can't bring the boat down here. There's no water to feed the locks. The reservoir is under repair that feeds this canal. So we thought we'd catch the train and walk back and have a look at it because apparently it's beautiful, this section. Everybody says it's one of the loveliest parts of the canal. So we've picked a glorious day, a beautiful sunny September morning. And um, yeah, we're just looking forward to the walk back and uh, some refreshments at some point, oh, I guess. It'd be nice if there was a beer at the end of it, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> I haven't had a beer for days. No, you haven't. <laughs> for two days at least. <laughs> <laughs> Right, let's do it. Come on, dogs, we're going. There's the remnants of a wharf here that was used in the 1840s to transport the stone from a nearby quarry to build the Houses of Parliament. So the stone was loaded here and then taken the 30 odd miles to West Stockwith and then on the River Trent down to London. What's this? More elderberry rub? No, we've got enough elderberry rub. But um, after using a piece of muslin to strain the last lot of elderberries and realising it stained it completely purple, I've done a bit of research. Apparently I can dye some of my wool with elderberries. Um, so I'm going to just practice on a little bit that I've hand spun and see if I can dye it and make it pink, blue, purple, whatever. So we'll see. Does that Right, how do you do it? In vinegar, apparently you just boil them down in vinegar and uh, steep your wool in it. But I'm um, just depends if it's going to fix properly and not wash out or not. It is a proper wool dye recipe. I've just got to try it. That's not going to stink the boat out, is it? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Everything comes at a price. Tell me about it. <laughs> well, I don't think we can blame boaters for this rubbish. <laughs> Blimey. Oh, that's terrible shame. That's the first lock we've come to and it's a triple set of locks, one straight after the other and it's all downhill from here. Well this is just lock after lock after lock. So uh, part of me is quite pleased we can't make it up here. We've been saying all year what a fantastic year it's been for the flowers and the fruits in the hedgerows, but I've never known a year when we've had so many fruits in the in the bushes and the trees. 
I took a photograph the other day and I thought it was autumn colours in the trees, but it was just, you know, they were packed with berries. And these hawthorns are just perfect now. There's so many of them. And um, as much as you begin to feel in autumn that it's time to sit back and rest and get a good book out and relax, there's so much to do. So I've now got elderberry dye to make. I'm going to definitely make some hoar, saucy hoar ketchup. Ooh. And um, the rose hips, like, like there's just so many different rose hips anyway. So definitely I'm going to make rose hip syrup to go on Richie's ice cream. So it's just busy. There's just too much to do, even though we're relaxing. It's wonderful, but yeah, better get on with it, I guess. Are you going to make me ice cream, did you say? No, I'm going to make you syrup to go on uh, your ice cream. Uh. I did make you sorbet out of some plant or another. Oh, I remember, remember that, yeah. It was okay, actually, wasn't it? It was lovely. But, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, the canal's opened up now into open countryside. It's been woodland all the way until now. And uh, as I was saying earlier, Fran, it's quite a blessed relief that we don't have to come up these locks, maybe. It is, but you know what? I think if we'd brought the boat up this far, we would have gone up with the boat all the way to the top. We would have done. Because there's all sorts of walks. You can walk across the tunnel to the other part of the canal. And I think we might have walked all the way to Chesterfield from the top there. But um, it's not to be, is it? 